The twice impeached former president announced that he's making a third run for the White House in the face of backlash from the GOP, several criminal investigations. Chief Washington correspondent John Carl's at Mar-a-Lago with the latest. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. Nearly two years after attempting to overturn a presidential election and inciting an attack on the U.S. Capitol, Donald Trump is running for president again. Donald Trump has spent two years attacking American elections, but now he's hoping voters will return him to power. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Surrounded by loyalists and members of his Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida, Trump largely stuck to the script written by his advisors, boasting about his record as president, attacking Joe Biden, and for the most part, staying clear of the election lies voters soundly rejected in the midterm elections. America's comeback starts right yes. now. Some fellow Republicans have blamed Trump for the party's failure to win big in the midterms. Trump acknowledged Republicans should have done better, but he said that was because Americans don't yet realize how bad things are under Joe Biden. The citizens of our country have not yet realized the full extent and gravity of the pain our nation is going through, and the total effect of the suffering is just starting to take hold. Trump's candidacy is clouded by multiple criminal investigations and lawsuits. From the investigation into the classified documents he took from the White House to a New York criminal investigation into his company. Just hours before he announced his campaign, Trump's longtime chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, took the stand describing how the company schemed to avoid paying taxes. Like many other Republicans, New Hampshire Governor Chris Sununu greeted Trump's announcement with a shrug. Whatever announcements may or may not be happening tonight, uh, <laughs> Frankly, nobody's going to care. But not long after Trump started speaking, President Biden posted a video portraying him as a threat to America. We will treat those people from January 6th fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons. There were some notable absences at Trump's big announcement in Mar-a-Lago. There were no members of Congress there except for Madison Cawthorn, who was about to leave Congress because he lost re-election, no governors. And Donald Trump Jr. wasn't there. Uh, he was out west hunting and said he had a hard time getting a flight back due to weather. And Ivanka Trump, the president's daughter, was not there. She put out a statement after the announcement saying, while I will always love and support my father, going forward, I will do so outside the political arena. Remember, George, she was a big part of his last campaigns and his White House. Yeah, quite a change from the last time. Okay, John, stand by. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. So Grover Cleveland lost and then ran again. Uh, that, besides that, everything else here is unprecedented, including all these criminal investigations. Right. So you've got three sort of buckets of criminal investigations. You've got the documents, you've got January 6th, and you've got efforts to overturn the election. And you also have federal and state investigations, depending on which particular issue you're talking about. Those are all the criminal side. Now, remember, there is currently an ongoing criminal case that is happening as we speak against the Trump organization, not Donald Trump specifically. The CFO testified yesterday. The CFO testified yesterday. We're talking about a case that is going on right now. That's in addition to the fact that the New York Attorney General is suing for $250 million. It's in addition to all the other civil lawsuits, et cetera. But, but, but clearly Donald Trump believes that somehow announcing for president will shield him from all these investigations. Well, it's not going to shield him, right? I mean, the best that this would do potentially is pressure the Department of Justice to get a special counsel, right? But people forget that even if the Department of Justice decided we need a special counsel here to make sure that the impression of fair and impartial justice continues. That special counsel still reports to the well, attorney yeah, general. Say, does that really make right? Any no, no. Th that's my point. Is it still reports to the attorney general? So even that, and I think it may be too late for that already. But even if there were, I don't think that's a fundamental game changer. And the answer to the big picture question: Does it protect Donald Trump legally? No, politically, you and I were just going back and forth on this. <laughs> that we all have plenty of time to discuss yeah. that. John, let me bring you back on the politics. Lots of Republican infighting right now. Both Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, House and Senate, facing challenges to their leadership.
Yeah, I expect McConnell will pretty easily knock down the threat to his leadership. As for Kevin McCarthy, uh, the Republican conference voted to put him forward as the Speaker of the House. That was just required a majority vote. But, George, 31 Republicans voted against McCarthy. When it comes to the floor of the House, when that vote actually happens, he needs to get 218 uh, members of Congress to vote for him. Right now, he's significantly short yeah, of that. Yeah, not even close to that right now. John Carl, Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.